Hello and welcome back to Soul Search Sunday with Johnny Tiger on June 9, 2024. I've been up since like 8 o'clock this morning. Uh, so energy level is running a bit low. I did not get a chance to uh, take a nap, but I did uh, get a lot of stuff done. None of it earth shattering or life changing, but you know, it's it's good to uh, uh, have a day where you can just knock off or start off a, a bunch of uh, big and little projects and things that you want to uh, take care of. And one of the things that uh, I uh, also did today was putting together uh, inspiration idea for the video today. Now. Most of us know what IQ is. That's an intelligent quotient that is supposedly uh, uh, measure how smart a person is, how intelligent a person is. Although that is not always uh, something good to go by. Supposedly, according to my father, my older brother David has the highest IQ of all my siblings. Uh, like comparing to my brother David, me and my younger brother, uh, both of us are like idiots, like going by IQ score. He, he's like not just a little bit higher, he's like a lot higher. And yet, he is the one that constantly in and out of jail and uh, doing just god awful stupid things, getting into really stupid situations. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think that high IQ is a. Uh, have to be questioned. Either IQ is not always cracked up to be, or when they tested him back in Taiwan, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't want to say schmack about Taiwan, but it was back in the 80s and in Taiwan, so who knows, who knows. But anyway, <laughs> um, so IQ measures how smart you are, and EQ, not not as many people know about EQ, but still a lot of people know about EQ, and we have definitely talked about EQ on this channel before. EQ is emotional quotient. EQ is that part of your brain, uh, that part of your personality uh, that help you understand, oh, this is not a good time to open my mouth. Oh, this is not a good time to say a certain thing. Uh, when is a good time to be honest? When is a good time to, to maybe lie a little and tell a white lie? When is a good time to speak louder? When is a good time to lower your voice? Uh, when is a good time to open your mouth and interject yourself into a conversation? When is a good time to shut up and listen? And all that is EQ. EQ is that part of you that tell you uh, it's so-and-so's birthday you probably want to get them something. And EQ is also that part of you that helps you decide what to get for that person that's going to make them happy. So emotional quotient is actually in many ways more important than uh, intelligent quotient as we also discussed before. So I'm not going to go deeply into that because that is not what it's about today. Today I'm going to talk about a third quotient that is even lesser known. This one is called CQ. CQ. Do you have a high CQ or do you have a low CQ? Or are you still back in the Stone Ages and you're still using an ICQ? <laughs> yeah, I'm joking. There's no ICQ. Uh, it's just CQ. What does CQ stand for? It's cultural quotient. Cultural quotient. Now, when I first heard about cultural quotient, I thought that means how cultured you are. Like, uh, if you have a high cultural quotient, you would be one of those people that speak with an English accent and um, sound like a gentleman and sound like you're really educated and you you know the cultural uh, stuff and you, you, you talk like you, you swallowed an entire museum. I thought that was what cultural quotient was about. However, in truth, cultural quotient is actually how good 
are you at accepting, understanding, and assimilating, uh, taking part, melting into other cultures? So, if you are a person who is a bigot, if you find that you 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 just don't care about other culture, you just want to do you, well, then your cultural quotient is pretty low. But if you find that you always mix well with other people's culture, you are not very judgmental. You are willing to try it their way. You are willing to understand why do uh, uh, some women from the Middle East wear uh, have to keep their face covered, and you are willing to understand why do Chinese people have to count out to our parents. If you are willing to understand. That Chinese immigrants work hard, not because we are overachiever, but because that's what we are here to do. If you are willing to look past your、uh, prejudice and the stereotypes and actually get in there, get in deep with other people's culture, I'm not talking about just say, "Hey, I really love Chinese food, so I have high cultural quotient." Huh? No, that just means you like Chinese food. But if you actually spend time to understand the food you're eating, why is Chinese food made the way it is? Why do Chinese people like to fry our vegetable? Why do Chinese people hate、uh, eating raw vegetable?、Uh, why don't Chinese people eat more sugary、uh, dessert like cakes and uh, uh, pies and stuff like that? If you actually spend the time to understand all that. Then I will say yes. Then you probably have a higher、uh, cultural quotient. So today I'm going to take this episode and do my civ- civic duty and、uh, do my best at helping you guys、uh, increasing your cultural quotient by、uh, just by a little bit、uh, by understanding Chinese people. Uh, in this episode, we are going to learn how to best communicate with Chinese people, how to talk to a Chinaman. If you are like right off the top of your head right now, thinking, "Why the hell do I need to learn that? I, I, why can't I just not talk to them? Why, why, why do I need to? Why do I need to do something special just to talk to the Chinese people?" Uh, well, then this episode is probably not for you. Then you know you're welcome to、uh, skip it and just come back later for something cool like martial art or, or music or fitness or something.、Uh, but if you have found yourself wondering before, hey, you know, I really would like to understand my Chinese friend more, and I really would like to offend them less. I really would like to make friends with Chinese people. I really would like to understand my Chinese coworkers or my Chinese spouses better. Because make no mistake about it, even if you are Chinese yourself, this may still be good for you. Because sometimes a lot of Chinese people, especially those of us who were brought up or educated in other countries, forget these things, or we never we were never taught these things, and. Make no mistake about it. You do need to、uh, make some allowances and make some special change、uh, in the way you communicate. When you communicate, not just with Chinese people, but with people from every culture. A lot of time, you feel like you're just be you, and people should just be okay with it. And a lot of time, we、uh, foreigners or we Chinese people, whatever, we 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 pretend. Ah、oh, ha ha! It's fine. It's fine. It, and then in our head we are thinking, just a stupid white guy. That you know, they they don't know any better. You know that that's what's going on in our head, right? We're we're smiling, we're 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 letting you get away with it because we think you are barbaric or uh, uh, not very well educated.、Uh, just like when we do something that don't you don't agree with, you feel that it's just because we we don't know better. It's probably because we are all criminals and crooks and. Stuff like that. So to breach that kind of misunderstanding or、uh, passive aggressive tendency, let me show you guys how to properly communicate with、uh, Chinese people. And I'm not specifically talking about people from China. 
I'm talking about people from Taiwan, Hong Kong, Malaysia, uh, Europe, Canada, America, and、uh, anywhere in the world that may have been brought up in a Chinese culture, Chinese centric family,、uh, and if you、uh, use what I show you today as a guideline, you will find that suddenly、uh, you will have a much easier time. Talking to, communicating with, working with Chinese people、uh, from、uh, Chinese culture. Number one, the six simple point to、uh, keep in mind. So number one, this one is like really, really obvious. I、uh, but and yet I've seen so many people. So many people do it. Many, many times intentionally,、uh, sometimes unintentionally. Okay, number one, don't imitate our accents. Yeah, it's rude. It's embarrassing. We hate it. Just don't, right? Like, and I shouldn't even have to tell you this. Like, no matter where the person come from that you're speaking with, it can be British or Irish or Uh, German or Chinese,、uh, just don't.、Uh, when you imitate the accent, it brings it to the forefront. And most of us immigrants are very, very, very sensitive about our accent. I been here for、uh, over thirty years, and I am still. Very, very sensitive about my accent. I have friends that have、uh, been here for forty, fifty years. They are still very, very sensitive about their accent. So, for everybody's peace of mind, don't imitate the accent. Don't comment on the accents. And if we happen to say something、uh, that not quite right, don't jump down our throat. Uh, to correct us, of course. If it's something that you think we should know, it's like so we don't get laughed at in the future.、Uh, like a lot of time, I will say uh, uh, advices uh, and and、uh, things like that, and and kitten will remind me you don't need to add s on that. And you know, like okay, sometimes I feel a bit defensive about it because you know what. I'm immigrant. Like、uh, it's my second language. It's not my first language. Like, and no one's be able to tell me why you add s to horses and and why can't you say sheep?、Uh, no one's ever be able to explain to that to my satisfactory. So, so what if I say advices? You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes I get angry about that. I get defensive. But you know what? It's fine. Like I don't mind being corrected like that as、uh, as long as. It's in a good spirited way,、um, but yeah, it, like when it comes to accents and、uh, making fun of the way we speak, just don't. Okay, it, it's rude and it's not nice, and it's almost a guarantee way to make us not want to be your friend or not want to deal with you. Period. Number two, watch your swearing. Okay, this one is less obvious, and he, he, this is something that、uh, a lot of people in North America,、uh, Europe. I think it's actually less in Europe because I know there are、uh, a lot of European people that actually get offended with this one too.、Uh, Access swearing is really not. Tolerated by Chinese people. The reason being that、uh, most of us, my generation, the previous generation, the next generation,、uh, most of us were brought up in a very strict environment,、uh, in which the moment you say a swear word, you will get smacked, you will get slapped, you will get spanked, you will get physically corrected. Uh, 
it's not just in an abusive family. This is true in almost, I can, I can guarantee you 99.9% .9 of Chinese people, even when they're adult, they will never utter a swear word in front of their parents because they are so uh, traumatized by the way they were punished when they were little, when they first learned to say the F word and the S word and the B word. Uh, and, and, and the uh, repercussion is immediate and fierce and very unpleasant. So most of us were brought up not to swear. Now, that's, that is not saying that most of us don't swear. We do. Uh, I do. Sometimes I will throw in a S word, F word uh, here and there. Uh, but ex excessive swearing in front of a Chinese person it's a quick way to get that Chinese person to not like you and uh, really kind of look down upon you because in Chinese culture, that, that is really a, a sign of poor breeding, a poor manner and all kind of negative things. Not to mention, like I said, bring out bad memory, especially, okay, this one is sexist. Okay, this one is sexist, especially if you are female. Now, don't get mad at me. I did not invent the rule. I'm just telling you, if you are a female and you're dealing with a Chinese person, be very careful not to swear because most Chinese women, uh, Chinese girls, Chinese ladies, they don't, they don't. <laughs> like even my mom, my mom is a very uh, aggressive and forward kind of person, but even my mom, she has to be really, really mad to even say a swear word. And then even when she does that, she's so awkward. It's just kind of funny. But yeah, so most Chinese people come from a culture where we don't swear that much. And especially women, they're not supposed to swear. Women's lips are meant to say beautiful, nice things. They're not supposed to be saying dirt, uh, like a horrible, uh, hurtful things. Uh, again, it's very sexist, I know, uh, but I did not invent the rule. I'm just telling you guys how it is. So if you are a lady watching this, next time you talk to your Chinese friend or you're talking to your Chinese coworker, just be extra mindful about uh, uh, keeping the swear word to a minimum. Number three, uh, don't make family jokes. Okay, um, I see that a lot of people in the Western culture, that especially Canadians and Americans, are very free with the your mom, your mama's ugly, uh, or your son of a bitch, or stuff like that. That is like a total no no to chinese people okay like not even joke joking like most chinese people will even get offended if you joke about their wife uh so like mom and dad is like no no category uh even friends even friends that being 10 20 30 years friends will not tolerate that because in chinese culture uh, the filial piety, the family love, is one of the highest virtue, even placed before loyalty and honesty and uh, do not murder and all that stuff. Like, it's okay to be a murderer, but if you still love your family, that's kind of fine. Well, it's not fine. You still go to jail and stuff like that, but, you know, like, people will think better of you if you are, like, on the other hand, if, if you are a good person, but you're lousy to your family, then pe everyone in Chinese culture will kind of look down upon you. Like Chinese culture, uh, a lot of what people uh, go by today come from the teachings of Confucius, and Confucius is a dis descendant. And Confucius put uh, how like your love, your respect to your parents as number one virtue in human. Uh, so. Chinese people, yes, uh, we are uh, by culture, by 5,000, 6,000 years of uh, 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 
passing this along, uh, naturally very offended by uh, family related jokes or jives or uh, making fun. Um, I, I remember I like even for me, I have been in Canada for a long time, but uh, when I uh, there were times when I talked to my uh, Caucasian friend, and you know, like some sometimes we get into a little like funny argument, like uh, they say, oh, uh, they like blah blah blah, and I say, yeah, but I heard that he, that person is pretty ugly, and and my friend like, no, no, what you heard is your mama's ugly. That makes me so angry that I want to hurt them really bad. Okay, even like uh, sometimes when I run, uh, I I run to my Caucasian friend, and my and they they will come up to me and smack me me on the shoulder. Hey, what's up, you son of a bitch? And even that, even that, like really triggers me. So you know, keep that away from Chinese people. Do not. Like it's best to not even talk about their parents. Period. Uh, don't joke about their wife. Don't you, don't do fat wife joke. Don't don't do ugly mom joke. Uh, uh, don't do things like that. Like family to Chinese people is very 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 sacred. That would like uh, people joking about Chinese people. Uh, like joking about family with Chinese people. Would be almost equivalent with uh, me going into a church and start making a uh, really bad Jesus or God joke. It's very offensive like that. So yeah, just just stay away from uh, poking fun or uh, uh, making jokes about family members. Now those three, honestly. Uh, are the more basic, fundamental, simple stuff that really should be the case for everybody. Like you know, uh, maybe I'm just too traditional and too serious, but I feel that you shouldn't be swearing excessively, no matter who you're talking to, no matter if you're Chinese or not. I, I feel that you shouldn't be doing family jokes and making fun of like poking at the mom. No matter if you're talking to a Chinese person or not, uh, and I, I, so, uh, I, and I feel that you you shouldn't be uh, uh, imitating their accent and making fun of the way they speak. No matter if you're speaking to a Chinese person or not. So those three uh, are appetizers. Uh, those three are, are, are starters. Now we get to the actual deeper stuff. Uh, the three more, and these are the more. Uh, Deep and lesser known part of how to communicate with a Chinese person. So, item number four: be humble and be low key. Okay, have, have, go in from a low perspective when you are dealing with uh, Chinese people, especially if you are asking them for help. Okay, I don't. I I already know that some people are thinking low perspective, because Chinese people are short. Well, I mean, yeah, bad Chinese joke, right? I I I know, I know, I know how some of you are thinking. No, when I say low perspective, keep your head down, keep your posture humble. Okay, Chinese people respond to humbleness、uh, much better than. Equal、uh, or superiority.、Uh, Chinese people don't. You can say that we are, in some ways, a very arrogant、uh, race of people.、Uh, in in many ways, you can say that、uh, we don't take pressure、uh, very well when you come from high places. We we rebel against authority. We tend to rebel against even people. Claim to be our equals. Chinese people have always had a very、uh, strict hierar hierarchy system.、Uh, no matter which level of society,、uh, from the government, you have the emperor, and then the minister, and then the magistrate to 
the the rich people to the poor people to the beggar, uh, to in your family you have your father, your mother, your brother, your、uh, sister, your、uh, and to you,、uh, there's always there's always a pecking order in Chinese、uh, culture. So when Chinese people are treated are put on the pedestal,、uh, are when you can you can even say. Blow smoke up their butt, they will respond a lot better、uh, than if you come in and expect them to treat you like equals or expect them to do things for you. Okay, so、um, for example,、um, to a white person or a black person being called a brother, it doesn't really mean anything, right? Like to most of you. Being called brother is just like a manner of speech. In Chinese culture, however, especially being called a big brother is a definite、uh, respect. It's an honor. Okay, so、uh, a lot of time we you will hear like if if we are talking to another Chinese person, a male, another male Chinese person will say, 大哥 hey hey 大哥你好 ah、uh, big brother how are you? 大哥，可以帮我帮忙一下吗 ？Big brother, can you give me a hand? So we are putting ourselves in the position of little brother. You are my big brother. I need you. Please help me. I mean, this is what I mean. Being humble, put、uh, going at a low、uh, perspective. You put yourself beneath them, and this way you'll find that a lot of things can get done very easily. A lot of Chinese people. Will respond to big brother. A lot of Chinese people will re- respond to grandfather. A lot of Chinese people will、uh, respond really well to teacher.、Uh, again, in the in the、uh, American and European、uh, white centric culture, being called a teacher doesn't mean anything. It's just your job. And so sometimes I I've even addressed someone as teacher, and that person correct me. No, no, no. I never taught you before. I'm not your. I I was never your teacher. Look, I'm calling you teacher because that is a honorable form of address in my culture.、Um, I'm not saying that you were my teacher or it was your job. I'm calling you teacher because that is a a un very honorable、uh, form of address. In Chinese culture, teachers are taken almost as seriously as father. Okay, when you call someone 老师啊、uh, or 师傅 okay, 师傅 it means master or teacher. 老师 means teacher. When you call someone 老师 or 师傅 it's a big deal in in Chinese culture. Ah,、uh, so, ah,、uh, if you're talking to a Chinese person, ah,、uh, next time, next time, like let's say if if you need your plumber, let's say if you have a Chinese plumber. And you want him to be more receptive and give you a deal or be more helpful, then it's quite. Don't stop calling him Mr. Johnson or whatever, okay, or Mr. Lee or whatever. Ah,、uh, call him 师傅啊，大哥，呃，啊 ，teacher or big brother. I bet you that they will respond so much better to you because Chinese people as a whole. Uh, understand peck in order, understand、uh, the totem. So when you come at us from beneath, when you put us above you, put us on the pedestal, and use very polite and respectful form of address, we will go out of our way、uh, to help you. But if you come in assuming that you are our equal and just call us by name. Or if you come in assuming that you are better than us, then I'm sorry, nothing is going to get done. Even if it's important things, it's not going to get done. Chinese people are very stubborn about that. Now,、uh, next Sunday, assuming I remember it, because a lot of time I make plan for next Sunday, and then I I I totally forget about it.、Um, Kitten always tell me I should write myself notes about what I want to do for video, but I like to、uh, just do off the top of my head and 
I feel that it's a little bit more uh, smooth and fluent that way. Anyway, I was going to say next Sunday, if I remember, I'm going to come back and uh, uh, we are going to talk about compliment uh, because complimenting Chinese people, there's an art to that too. Um, but we are going to uh, sort of uh, skip past that today. So uh, item number four, uh, as we just finished talking about, you want to come at a Chinese person, especially if you are trying to ask them for something, if you need them to do something for you, uh, come from a low place, you know, come from beneath them, put them on a pedestal, blow smoke off their butt. Don't be fake about it, but just, you know, call them big brother or call them uncle, call them whatever, you know, they love that. So yeah, uh, uh, be humble, uh, just keep a low profile. Now, item number five, this one is where a lot of people have problem with Chinese culture. I have problem with Chinese culture in, in this one too. So I understand, but this is also very important. Item number five, don't overstate something. Okay, don't be blunt. Chinese people as a whole are very unha uh, unhappy and uncomfortable with bluntness. And I can give you a very valid reason why, because from the beginning of time, Chinese people have been taught that sometimes things can really go wrong when you are too blunt. When you say something too directly, the emperors kill you, the magistrate kill you, your neighbors sue you, your fathers beat you, your mothers beat you, your brothers beat you, right? Like saying something directly is a very dangerous thing in to a Chinese person. So some people say, well, that, but that's thousands of years ago. Yeah, but if you look at modern Chinese history, after we overthrew the imperial system and uh, we have a leader, okay? Let's look at the first couple of leaders in Chinese modern history, Zhang Kai-shi. Yeah. I know, that name gets me too, Jiang Jie Shi. I'm just going to say his Mandarin name because Zhang Kai Shi just sounds like I'm saying the uh, bad word about his name. <laughs> Jiang Jie Shi is the guy who uh, got chased all the way to Taiwan and set up government on Taiwan. So he's the first president in Taiwan. Um, he put in like a martial law that lasted longer than 10 years, which means while that thing was in place, while that martial art, martial law, not martial art, while that martial law was in place, you couldn't say anything without a uh, possibility of being shot in the head or going to jail because someone turned you in for uh, disrespecting your country and president and government. There's no freedom of speech. Okay, and this was only back in the 50s and 60s and 70s. When I was going to school in Taiwan, uh, if you speak the wrong language in school, you get punished. If you say the wrong thing in school, you get punished. If you even dare to speak back, talk back to the teachers, you get punished. Uh, that, that's how bad it was. Let's look at China. When Chairman Mao, Mao Zedong, uh, Mao Zedong was in power, it's just as bad. If you say something, uh, there, was a, there was a woman who got put to death because her son reported her for criticizing the government. You know, and again, this was in the four, uh, 40s, 50s, 60s. So Chinese people have had a long, long, long history of being oppressed. So we have developed a very intricate system of communication where it's best not to say everything too clearly. So we always have room to maneuver. If someone, if some unforeseen consequences happen, we have room to backtrack. We have room to maneuver and say, say we were misunderstood. Okay. So this is why Chinese people don't like bluntness. This is why Chinese people always like to uh, state things in a very covert way. 
So when you are dealing with a Chinese person, you don't want to be too blunt because it make us very uncomfortable. It make us feel like you're forcing us into a corner. It make us feel that uh, it, 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 we 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 are being um. We're we're being cornered. We're being cornered, and 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 it, it make us very unhappy. It make us very nervous. So so when a Chinese person uh tell you maybe, or when the Chinese person say, oh I'll come see you sometime, leave it at that. Okay, don't press the subject. If we want to see you, we'll see you. If we want to say yes, we'll say yes. But if we say uh something that is very non-committal. That is our self-defense mechanism. Don't cross our boundary because if you force the matter, then you are just going to get a no every single time.、Uh, so yeah, Chinese people don't like bluntness. Don't like uh, overt uh, clarity. Always leave us room to maneuver. Always don't don't try to back us into a corner. Is what I'm saying.、Uh, So,、uh, when you're communicating with a Chinese person, be mindful of that. That、uh, honesty and、uh, clarity is not valued in Chinese culture. Now, I consider myself to be a very good、uh, communicator and very diplomatic and very easy to communicate with. But even for me. Uh, a lot of my people consider me to be overly rude and blunt and direct.、Uh, so yeah, like I said, this one is a、uh, is definitely a tough one. Now we come to item number six, and this one is also very important. Do not embarrass us. Chinese people are really big and safe in face, and sometimes you don't intend to embarrass us, but your action. Will cause really bad feeling when you don't think it through. Let me give you an example.、Uh, last year, I was talking to a friend, and this friend said, "Hey, you know, I want to ask you something. I was a,、uh, I, I had a couple of、uh, Chinese elders coming to my event and sharing the story. And afterward, I wanted to pay them, so I tried to give them money, and they." Got offended and they they turned me down. I I thought that you told me that Chinese people really love money, and I was like, oh boy. Yes, we we do. We love money. Like money is one of the most valued things in Chinese culture, but we don't like to be treated like prostitutes or、uh, cheap thrills. So when you want to give a Chinese person something. Don't say it and don't do it where everyone can see it because it make us feel cheap. Right? If you say to me, okay, this is、uh, me. A, a lot of a lot of Chinese people are the same way. If you say to me,、uh, if you say to a Chinese person, "Hey, it's your birthday tomorrow. What would you like? I'll buy you something." Or if you say to a Chinese person, "Hey, I'm. Uh, uh, would you like some food? I'll buy you some food." Like. Nine point nine out of ten times, this person, no matter how hungry they are, no matter how much they want to have a gift, they will say no, thank you. Okay, they may say no, thank you. Okay, that's me gritting my teeth while saying that because that's how it feels. We really want to say yes, but we can't because it make us look cheap, right? So. I and and I have expressed this to my friends before too. If you want to buy me food, just buy me food, okay? Or just, 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 just、uh, don't make a big deal about. Don't ask me. If you ask me, my upbringing, my culture, it's almost be certain to make me say no, thank you. Even though I'm starving to death, I can't say yes to that food because it make me feel like a beggar. Okay, in my culture, that that is really big.、Uh, so when you, when you deal with a Chinese person, back to this friend who asked me about the uh, uh, paying the elder, I said they 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 want the money, but they can't take the money 
like that when when they just come to your event and then everybody's there looking at them and then you're trying to give them money. Yeah, in the white culture that's okay, but in Chinese culture, that makes them feel like they they are cheap. That makes them feel uh like like like、uh, slaves or labor、uh, like cheap labor. So、uh, it's it just not not cool. So if you are seriously Wanting to pay them, what you want to do is give them a, a box of cookie. Okay, go buy a box of cookie and then buy a card, a thank you card. Stick that card on the box of cookie and then stick that money in the card. That's all. Okay, don't don't even mention the money. Yeah, and you won't mention it. They won't mention it. But in their heart, they'll love you. That they, they'll they'll love working for your events because you know. Proper etiquette when dealing with them, and you save them face, and you save the, and you you do not embarrass them. So、uh, a lot of time when you are dealing with a Chinese person,、uh, be very mindful that face is very big、uh, in Chinese culture. It's like death before dishonor. I mean, it's not that bad, but it, it's almost like that. Like、uh, a Chinese person will starve to death before he accept your food if you. Offer in the wrong way, uh, so um, just to quickly recap what we've talked about so far is that、uh, number one, uh, uh, don't swear excessively. Right. Uh, number two, uh, don't make family jokes. Uh, don't just don't 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 make uh fun. Uh, where family is concerned, it's very sacred to us. And even if we have bad family, like I have really bad family, I don't get along with my family. But if you start joking with me about my mom or my dad, I get really offended still. And number three, do not make fun of our accent or the way we speak. It is very offensive, and we are already very、uh, sensitive about that. Number four, if you want us to do something, if you want something done, then come at it from a, a humble perspective. Okay,、uh, we 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 are we、uh, are much more open to that.、Uh, number five,、uh, be mindful of not embarrassing us.、Right? Be be very mindful of、uh, saving face is a really big. Very important part of our、uh, culture, and be careful with that one. Last but not least, remember this: that Chinese people do not like to be cornered in conversation. Okay, we we like to have rooms to dodge. We like to have room to maneuver to backtrack、uh, when we say something. So try not to shove that. Honesty and clarity and bluntness down our throat. It, it's not pleasant.、Uh, it's almost like being, uh, being, being、uh, raped in a conversation. Okay. So those are the six most fundamental things. If you truly want to learn how to get along with a Chinese person, if you want to learn more about Chinese culture, and you want to understand Chinese people, the way we speak, the way we do things. And these six things will give you a really good start. Like I said, next Sunday I'll come back and we'll talk a little bit about、uh, how best to compliment a Chinese person. Again,、uh, none of these is written in stone. None of it is going to work for every person.、Uh, but this is、uh, something that I think is very important,、uh, especially now we live in a world where we、uh, run into people from. Different cultures every day, so I think the more of this kind of materials out there, especially from、uh, in in my case from from someone who is Chinese who understand the Chinese culture, who was brought up in that system,、uh, I think there's a uh, uh, hopefully uh, me having this、uh, frank and honest、uh, video is able to help you out. We'll be back again tomorrow for Music Monday. For now. Have a good night.